made it down to camp. I uh, found a little cubby hole. Kind of worked back some branches. Uh, Carla gave me a ride here to Kingsport. But I kind of got a little cubby hole back here by the fence, kind of hidden in some undergrowth. But I'm in the perfect spot for uh, for catching out later on the southbound, I hope. Uh, got everything I need and a pretty good spot. And it's just now morning, daybreak here at the yard. What? what little yard there is right here look on the far right that string of cars there's a crummy on the end a caboose they just use them around the local area going into Eastman chemical company and the big paper company we got here Uh, yeah, at first I was down there by that, uh, silver box. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Nope. So that's southbound. This northbound towards Huntington, Cincinnati. I see a far. If it gets too cold, I'll go over there for marshmallows. But my train will come in from the north, heading, heading southbound towards the Smoky Mountains. But I found me a quiet little place. Actually, pretty warm. I'm kind of overdressed. But I was able to save some vines without removing them. That way, when I get to off, get off down in there, I can kind of latch them back over the hole. Keep hitting better. Them engines that were in that last clip, I know he didn't see me. I forget what kind of not honeysuckle it's some other kind of flower and vine but well if I can push through it load it up with some goodies got my leftover pot roast and potatoes and carrots in that Tupperware and my new railroad stickers for my bucket <clears throat> yeah I'm just using my summer pack all I got in there is a pair of pants shirt socks Two socks and uh, my bedroll. But now I can lift this stuff back up and kind of make a hidden doorway. But now southbound usually comes in around seven, eight o'clock, and it's about that now. But they do occasionally run an hour or two late. So. Hoping for the best. That was just two switch engines that were in that last clip. Well, I moved down. Uh, I was right around the corner there. But now that it's daylight, I've seen a better spot. I had to clean up a bunch of garbage. Now I see a little bit more, see stuff like that, that garbage, that attracts the human eye 
when you're looking at something like woods like this, anything out of the ordinary that ain't natural will make a, make a person focus on it when they glance out. So I just threw all the garbage over there and where it's hid. And since I got about two hours sleep last night, I just went ahead and rolled out everything. So when the train comes in, he's got to do a lot of yard work, drop some cars, pick some up. So I'll have time to roll everything up, get ready and walk down. But uh, I'm going to catch some sleep. Yeah, this warm, warm sleeping bag. It's got the summer bag and the winter and the bivy, the bivouac uh, shell on it. But uh, I'll see you guys later. I'll probably feel a lot better. got here is cotton balls and Vaseline when the weather's bad take a little Vaseline wipe on the cotton ball I can get a grip. Yow. Yeah, it stuck to my hand, so. There we go. Just to get it going. It's fixing the rain. So I figured I'd get a fire going for it. Started raining. Not bad, just sprinkles. Yeah. It was 22 degrees colder two hours ago. And we went to a southwest flow, meaning that subtropical jets getting closer, taking warmer, more moist air out of the southwest. It, to me, it feels colder now than it did 22 degrees ago. Yeah, there's a little bit of trash down here. Somebody left, so. I'm going to try to burn up some of it before it gets uh, too wet. I always make sure I get my small kindling and medium size built in a pile for a get any of the big stuff just to get it going and once it gets going I'll uh, make it more rectangle Some of the smaller stuff, but it's going now. It just would have been a lot harder wet. And that higher humidity really makes it a little cooler.
usually when I first start a fire, I'll walk back out of camp and judge how much smoke it is. But if you build your fire right, where it breathes to the bottom and goes up center, you don't really have any smoke. Yeah, I can see it a little, but you got to get this close to see it. I didn't want to build one last night because train go by, that fire would attract attention. Well, I'm waiting for this automatic computer track to switch over. There ain't going to be a southbound train come in unless this switch lines up with the main See, he's lined to go to the right. And that goes down into like Eastman Chemical Plant. But straight center is kind of what I'm waiting on. That'd be neat to see it go off and automatically move over. That's electric motor in there yeah I've been coming back at the signal you can get ahead of the signal here yep I just felt a couple of raindrops yeah he's both red but it'll stay that way until that track moves over and then he'll turn yellow or green <sighs> yeah, it got down to like oh, I don't know 26 27 last night and then about two hours ago it hit 30 and now it's up to like uh, 47, something like that. A propane tank. Uh, now, one of them track warmers, that'd be nice to see, see it come on that heats up that element there and fire comes out and that's what that propane tanks there for anytime you see a propane tank on the side of the tracks it's running those because when it's really cold that lubrication oil on the track gets stiff it's harder for that switch to move over and line up if it's cold so it heats up uh, when it gets a signal that way when the train gets here it's already nice and little soft and lubricated good down in here without breaking my neck yeah I felt a couple of raindrops I'm gonna check that Doppler radar again it just looks like light stuff for now yeah, if it wasn't for that warm front that went through uh, it'd be snowing because it was sure cold enough two hours ago Well, I found out why my train never come in. There was a, a derailment uh, just a little after midnight up near Clinchco, Virginia. That is, uh, 
I'd estimate 70 or 80 miles north of here, the way I'm facing right now, the way we're walking. Uh, I kept thinking, my God, this has been 18 hours since any southbounds come in. And I seen on one of the posts, somebody says, check your update. And, uh, at first, I thought it was on a different line. I thought it was on the NS, North Fork Southern, but I looked a little closer and I realized that it is CSX and there was two locomotives and uh, seven cars, I think. And it's going to take them probably two days to clean that up. And I ain't going to sit out in the snow and rain for two days while they get the line back open. So I'm walking back and uh, Lawrence is coming from Johnson City to pick me up. Uh, I just got to go walk back to a, a place where he can come get me. Uh, going to walk back to the interstate. I just hope that switch don't activate when I walk over it. But yeah, when I first checked, they didn't really know anything. It kind of happened behind the Clinch Co. Uh, fire department. And they're rerouting vehicle traffic. And see, so that'll be all, an ongoing all-day thing there. So, And I'm not going to uh, ongoing all-day sit under a tarp in the snow and rain. Uh, and that's the train that would have come here but instead of getting on that train it didn't make it it derailed so if if the locomotives derailed then it must have been a broken rail or uh, I don't know I haven't seen close-up pictures I don't know if it happened at a bridge or or what but usually when a locomotive derails and then the following cars behind it it's a broken rail because it's already out of line when that first car hits it the locomotive uh, yeah that right there that's a covered trail bridge there's like a little walking jogging trail down there but that big river uh, is the south fork uh, oh they still got snow up on that there's bays and mountain they got a neat planetarium up there Yeah, the South Fork Holston River. That little creek, I don't, uh, I don't know what it is. But yeah, they got a caboose up in the yard behind me. I went over to it thinking I could get in and get out of the rain, but it welded shut the door. Don't even know why they use them if they can't get in them. So, I guess I'll just upload this video when I get home then. Uh, go back, thaw out. I'm just glad this happened to me right here. Otherwise, I'd be stuck for two days. And it has happened before. One time there was a train in front of me that had derailed oh, like 14, 15 miles of in front of me. And they just took the crew off, stopped the train I was on behind it 15 miles and took the crew off. Left me out in blazing nowhere. <laughs> then I was in a derail outside Hearn, Texas. It was like... Uh, 
I don't know, 18, 20 cars up from me. I never even knew it happened. Well, I heard the air, the then we come to a stop, but I didn't feel no jerking or anything. We wasn't going that fast. Then I was in a box car in a yard. And they were flat switching some stuff. And they derailed a box car next to me once. It just ran an axle off. Find the weirdest stuff on the railroad tracks. That old Santa Fe line down in Stevensville, Texas. You go out there and find these big glass marbles. They melt sand down in the glass and they form these spheres out of them. About a little smaller than the golf ball. And they put them in gondolas to ship other places so they can be remelt back down again and formed into glass products. But they're really neat if you find them. They got a bunch of little bubbles in them. They look like old antique marbles. The way marbles used to look back in the 1800s. You could probably pass them for that at an antique shop if you found a bunch of them. <laughs> Yeah, I kept thinking, man, there, there is absolutely no reason. There's not even an inspection truck. And uh, the last northbound was that double train. It was uh, a full uh, ethanol train. Had two engines on the front. A mile long ethanol train. And then they had uh, four locomotives in the middle, and then they had an entire coal train on the other end of those locomotives. So you had two trains with one crew. They just hooked each of them together. You really don't see that that often. Yeah, it's going to take them probably near near two days to clean that derail up. Nine cars all together. They probably just now getting the crane out there to lift them cars. Yeah, that's Bay's Mountain. I didn't know it still had snow on it. Yeah, that could have been what fell today, I guess. I just didn't think it precipitated that much yet. But Lawrence, yeah, he'll be coming in this road under me. That little roundabout. There's an appliance repair shop down here that's a good geolocation to, for drop-off and pick-up. I'm just lucky, though, because back in the day when... I first got out here, I didn't have nobody to come help. But you know, I still got to get out. There's uh, my first 31 solid years, I really didn't have anybody. I was, I'd work at the day labor places and get enough for food and clothes or whatever, but I didn't have a home. It was by choice, but still. And now that I got this apartment last year, it's, it's a blessing and it's a curse. There's another one of them double barrel grainers. Yeah, I'm almost to the interstate now. Interstate goes over the tracks where I was earlier in the video. But I hope I don't get these mixed up when I upload them. I know I recorded that Star Wars train there. It got me going around on the track but 
some reason it didn't make it into that last video so I must have skipped one on accident because I wanted to show it that Star Wars train rolling well I ain't got to worry about train hitting me right now this is the line that goes up there Clinchco um, I'm just going to estimate 70 miles it, it may be a little less or a little more it's south of Pikeville, Kentucky. Uh, can't remember that other little town right next to it. But it's in Dickens County, Virginia, where that derail happened. Uh, heck, I actually could have slept on these cars last night. I was worried they were going to go to a re Eastman Chemical Plant. Uh, I've done that before. Go to sleep up off the ground on the grain and end up in Texaco. I mean, you're behind secure fence and everything. They're, boy, they mad at you too. They're like, where in the hell did you come from? And then, of course, they see your backpack and they're like, what is this guy up to? What you got in that bucket? That dynamite or... Usually, I, I would flag somebody down before I picked up my backpack, kind of let them know what happened. Oh, they always just bring you to the gate and let you out, kind of with a grin, because they know what happened wasn't, uh, wasn't intended. Well, ah. Uh, I actually could have come down here, but the only thing is, when that southbound train comes up, uh, the yard office is about a mile up where we're looking right now, and the tail end of the train would be a little bit further down right here, and you'd have to walk just to get to the last car, but where I was is... About 80 car lengths back from where the crew change and stop. So I was at perfect spot. I went ahead and left my water bottle down there. No sense in carrying it when I'm going to be back in two days. Uh, that water is like seven and a half pounds a gallon. So, and my hands are ice. I just have a problem keeping my dang glove on with those two fingers missing the glove actually just ends up getting in the way <laughs> Lawrence actually may be pretty close to being here already we're here now we just got to go down the embankment this interstate 26 yeah if you look on google maps it Beige Mountain, you'll see the planetarium, and they got a little dam and a lake up there. That's southbound I 26. Well, and northbound, but the right hand lane is going southbound. And Johnson City's on the other side. Yeah. Well, my fingers are froze. Thing is, my hands are so big, I, I, my, I don't fit in most gloves. And they're so tight, they cut off the circulation, so your fingers automatically go cold because of that. You know, my hands always been funny with gloves. That's why I wish I had them mittens. Mittens are the best. Uh, I had a pair I lost that I got in Alaska. I, I just can't find mittens anywhere. I mean, you got them ones at Walmart, but they're like fluorescent pink and green, and you never can find a black or orange. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to descend about 30 foot. Ah, let's see. Ah. 
Man. All that for nothing, but that's how it goes. Let's see if I can do this without busting my rear end coming down. Well, at least I can hop in the hot shower and get my internal temperature back up. It's that humidity that's what's making it so bad. I can handle most any cold. I'd almost rather be in Minnesota right now than the wet air here. Yeah. Kind of getting shaky. I should have bought a couple of more of them iced tea. That sugar always cracks that shaky. But here we are. I got to wait here now set this bucket and stuff down and there's that seafood house uh, well can't say you didn't try on that one <laughs> yeah if I hadn't seen that comment somebody left on that community post that I just made of it under the tarp, I wouldn't have looked until way later, so it would have been a wasted rest of the day. So whoever left that comment, I appreciate it. Well, yeah, and you can pull your boat. That's... uh. South Fork Holston River there. Got a boat launch. Flows pretty quick here. That's the appliance repair shop right there. That's the only one on Google Maps. So. Anyway, uh, Lawrence just dropped me off. Uh, yeah, that whole line's blocked because of that derailment on CSX. Uh, they got to clean up the cars that are off the track. Two locomotives, seven cars. Then they got to repair that single track through there so nothing can get by any direction. I was wondering, I kept thinking, man, it, everything has just stopped. There's got to be a reason. And, yep, after I read that article, I was like, man, I can't believe that is the train I was supposed to be on had it come on in. But there's always a reason for something. I've been through this several times before. You know, by the way, I got a high and tight again. But anyway, it got all that hair off. In the description area of this video, I'll put a link to that train derailment that's caused all this. And it's going to be a good two days at least before they can get that line back open. So I'm going to head out tomorrow, but on a different railroad. So, I know I promised you guys a video, and here it is. Uh, I just didn't want to keep people worried either. Just thought I'd let everybody know what the excitement was all about and the disappointment. So, trips three or four days in the making now, and I'm still not going one inch. But, it's always for a reason, so I'd rather this reason than had I been on that train 70 miles away. But, yeah, just look on the bottom of the description and I'll have a link down there to the derailment. 